quality improvement during the COVID-19 pandemic measurement for improvement. My name is John Fitzsimons. I'm a consultant paediatrician with Children's Health Ireland at Temple Street and clinical director for quality improvement with the National Quality Improvement Team. At the end of this session, you'll be able to appreciate the importance of measurement for improvement to describe the usefulness of looking at data over time and to discuss the impact that data display has in how it influences people. So, what is the purpose of measurement? Well, there's a lot of measurement performed in healthcare services. One of the reasons for this is to provide assurance and accountability. We also gather measurement to help us learn for research and indeed for improvement. But ultimately, the purpose of all measurement is to influence and change behaviour. This table shows some of the different reasons why we might gather data for judgment, for research, or improvement. And one of the key things here is to show the difference in measurement strategy, depending on the reason. For judgment, we might want to watch and look at all of the available data. In research, we might go looking for just in case or extra data in case we need it later in our analysis and because it would be very hard to find if we hadn't gathered it too. In improvement, we try to work with the idea of just enough data, small but sequential samples. This is also useful when working in crisis or difficult situations because asking staff to collect just enough data is usually possible. There are four broad steps in measurement for improvement. The first is to select and define measures. Selecting a few measures for the just enough data collection, but the important measures that help us to know that we are achieving our goal and that we are meeting the steps needed to get there. We also need to define these measures using what we call operational definitions. This is important for measures such as time, which need a definition to decide when the time starts and when it ends. We need to collect measures. And the key thing here is to make it easy to collect measures and where possible to collect measurement that has already been used for other purposes and use it for improvement. We need to analyze results. And importantly here, one of the most useful things we can do is to look at data over time. And finally, we need to share our measures to help influence and change behavior. In this representation of the ideas of Donabedian, structure and process and culture are the ingredients that lead to any outcome. All of these can be measured. Measuring processes can be a useful way of knowing that we are doing the activities necessary to achieve a goal. However, it is also important to keep an eye on outcomes to know that we are actually achieving the quality or safety goal we are setting out to. Measurement can be quick and easy as well. It doesn't have to be complicated. Here, a nice demonstration of simply gathering someone's opinion. This could be done easily on a daily basis with little or no effort. This quote from Don Berwick shows the importance of measuring data over time. 
and as he suggests if you follow only one piece of advice when you get home pick a measurement you care about and begin to plot it regularly over time you won't be sorry one of the simple ways of doing this is to use what is called a run chart this plots data over time allowing for variation to be seen from day to day there are some simple, simple additions that can be made to a run chart such as the addition of a median line that allows for the application of rules that help to statistically analyze the data a goal line can be added that helps identify and visually display what the achievement is to be and finally annotations that tell us what is happening and allow the data and the chart to tell a story in this example a run chart is shown where an observer is looking at 10 staff each day to see if they are removing PPE correctly and safely. This has been defined and it is clear what safe removal of PPE is. At the beginning a new training video has been introduced however there is some concern that some staff are not removing PPE correctly and may therefore be at risk. It's noted when an observer or buddy is available that there is some improvement in the correct removal of equipment and when this is instituted reliably that this seems to result in a consistent change with all staff correctly removing PPE. This of course would need to be monitored further over time but maybe not as intensively, maybe looking every few days. This is a reference to a paper in the BMJ Quality and Safety from 2011 of some simple rules that can be used to help analyse run charts. These rules help show that the patterns seen in the data are actually statistically significant. Further analysis of run charts can be done by creating what is called a short control chart or just a control chart. In these, some software will help to create upper and lower control limits and this provides additional information most importantly that data points within the control limits are referred to as being in control this would suggest they are part of the normal system however data points outside of the control limits are what we call special causes and these require different analysis to understand what is going on. There is a lot can be learned from understanding control charts. There are other tools that can be used to learn and study variation, including frequency plots, Pareto charts and scatter plots. One that is most useful is the Pareto chart. This help helps us to look at variation within the causes of a problem and helps us again to identify the vital few causes that are creating most of the variation seen. It's important to, to display your data to help to share its message and the choice of chart depends on what that message is. Here there is an example of a pie chart showing a study 
where individuals were screened for SARS-CoV and a bar chart displaying the symptoms of presentation. This is another tool. This is called the Safety Cross. It is a simple tool where every day the box is shaded to show a change. The shading is color dependent on what has happened and this allows for a simple way of measuring and demonstrating change that can be done easily and on an ongoing basis. In conclusion, measurement for improvement is different from measurement for judgment or research. It is important to select a small number of measures that will help guide your efforts and let you know when you are achieving your aim. Measuring in small samples over time is useful. And in crisis situations, efforts need to be made to limit the burden of measurement on staff who are already busy.